As some Nigerians continue to crave for mind-altering substances like cocaine, marijuana and codeine as tools for escapism, the risks associated with the practice are deadly. The National Drug Law Enforcement says over 50% of Nigerian youths are involved in drug abuse. What can be done to address this huge challenge? My guest on this week's episode of the program talks about the rising cases of drug abuse. Hello there, thank you for joining me on the program this week. I'm Gloria Umezuke. The problem of drug abuse presents a clear and present danger in the country, according to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. The agency says the practice is fueling various vices, including armed robbery, killing, kidnapping, rape, among so many others. I had a conversation with the chairman of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency on the spate of drug abuse in the country, and he paints a very scary picture of the future of the younger generation. But first, what are the stories that made headlines within the week in the nation's capital? Justice Bintenyako of the Federal High Court Abuja has set aside an ex parte order of forfeiture of the sum of $5.8 million, 3.5 billion naira and 16 separate bank accounts belonging to the former First Lady Dame Patience Jonathan, her firms and foundation. The judge stated in her ruling on an application brought by Mrs. Jonathan that the interim 90 days order of forfeiture had elapsed without the court being convinced by the argument of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to extend the forfeiture order. It was jubilation at the national headquarters of the People's Democratic Party as former Vice President al Tiku Abubakar visited the leadership of the party ahead of its convention. al Abubakar used the opportunity to urge members of the party who had defected to other parties to return to the fold. Now that we have learned our lessons, I hope that we will be guided by the lessons we have learned. And that is to make sure that we build an all-inclusive party, a party where every part of this country will have a sense of belonging and a sense of participation. All what I have come to do today is to come and show my face. Many people have read in the media that I have returned home. This is the home. Let me, in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, pay tribute to the past leadership of this great party, wherever they may be, and to call upon them to please return home as I have done. The National Assembly have passed the 2018 to 2020 median term expenditure framework. In passing the MTEF, lawmakers are maintaining the majority MTEF assumptions proposed by the executive but are increasing the benchmark price of crude. In order for the Senate to stamp its feet and ensure financial prudence and ensure the execution of, uh, of uh, the intendment that necessitated the arrival for the uh, benchmark, in the Appropriation Act itself, sir, we can insert a clause that will make it illegal and unlawful for the executive to temper with anything in the excess of what we have said at benchmark without having to come back to the National Assembly. It's been said or touted occasionally that um, they will use those recovered funds in funding the budget. Did you at, ever, at any time in the course of your exercise inquire into the whereabouts of this money and uh, whether we are plowing it back through the budget or otherwise? 
The Nigerian Navy will soon begin to run a private university in Delta State, and it is one of the six new private universities approved by the Federal Executive Council meeting, presided over by the Vice President, Professor Yemu Shibajo. We've decided that the NUC will up its own act. These universities, the new ones, as well as the existing ones, as well as the public ones, the issue of quality, assurance, issue of standard, and then issue of accreditation will be looked into very, very, very seriously. The National Intelligence Agency is to have its own pension board to handle pension matters for the officers and personnel of the agency. President Mohamed Buhari signed the act establishing the board. The other bills signed into law are the Air Force Institute of Technology of Nigeria Establishment Act 2007 and the Federal College of Dental Technology and Therapy Establishment Act 2017. Their pension is going to be regulated under that act exclusively. Then the Nigeria Institute of Dental Technology is uh, establishing by law formally the Institute of Dental Technology and Therapy, which is in existence today at Enugu. It is just giving legal effect to it with power for them to award degrees, diploma and certificates, and it is headed by a provost. It also has a council. So these are the bills Mr. President has assented to, and uh, it has become law. And the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, says the major cause of the fuel scarcity currently being witnessed across the country is shortfall in supply of petroleum products. However, he said that steps are being taken to ensure that the queues disappear by the weekend. There was obviously um, um, some level of gap in terms of, in terms of volume. And that gap arises from the fact that NMPC is the only one who is importing a product currently. Uh, most of the people who were expected in the private sector to import product uh, were not able to bring in product. And some of them have pushed back on the days they are able to bring products into January. And so you, you have NMPC rapidly trying to fill up um, the product requirement to 100% capacity basis. Now, luckily, <coughs> there, there was enough, um, some good storage, um, which they are releasing right now. They are also um, um, making emergency, taking emergency steps to try and fill whatever gap that they see in the December period. Post, post January, not so much of an issue because most of the uh, deliveries expected uh, should be coming in. I understand, in fact, for, for December, um, we're looking at uh, about four, four, four cargoes coming over the next few days, uh, but cumulatively, uh, close to about 20, uh, 20 to 30 cargoes. Um, so, so it's a timing issue. Timing because uh, some of the products expected from private sector didn't come in. Uh, but they're making every effort to try and quicken the process of delivery of the ones that they're expecting. Uh, and then in the interim, they're resourcing to what is in storage. And then um, luckily, also the refinery uh, in, um, in Cardona has been streamed. So that is beginning to produce right now. So that should also help uh, um, uh, the product situation. Additionally, Port Harcourt is also streaming. It is expected that uh, about the 12th to 14th, uh, Port Harcourt, uh, will be able to get into production. Once they do that, uh, there's about 2.1 million liters of production per day, and that should sufficiently provide a very big boost. Uh, so that's also been uh, fastened. The head of refineries here is also just up on that. Now, what is the, um, what are we expected to see over the next one week? Uh, the indications that I get from the reports I get from my NPC is that, quite frankly, over the next couple of days, uh, you should see a sliding down of any of those uh, sort of cues. It's already beginning to happen in Lagos. We expect that over the weekend to happen also, also in Abuja. The National Judicial Council on Thursday said it had at the end of its 84th meeting in Abuja sacked Justice Adeni Ademola and Justice Oo Tokode from the Federal High Court bench. The council, which is headed by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, said it found the two judges guilty of engaging in acts of judicial misconduct. Justice Ademola, who was among eight superior court judges that were arrested after a sting operation, the Department of State Service conducted in October last year had earlier voluntarily resigned. Two Nigerians, Professor Adesoji Adishino and Mr. Bruce Onobrakbeya, are being honored with the National Order of Merit Award for their contributions to creative, intellectual, and academic pursuits of global reckoning. Vice President Yemo Shibajo presented the 2017 awards in the council chambers of the State House in Abuja. On behalf of the President, President Muhammad Buhari and the people of Nigeria, I congratulate you both on this great achievement. 
you are not just national treasures, you are now important milestones in the checkered history of Nigeria's upward trajectory. Your stories and attainments now inspire the future. It is on the sturdy shoulders of your achievements that the coming generations of Nigerian artists and scientists will stand with confidence and hope. This is the awesome responsibility that you bear. Therefore, for you, there will never be a time in your professional lives where you will retire and proceed to bask in the abundance of past accomplishments. This is the tough price of your outstanding feats of intellection and innovation. In any event, as the American state, statesman Bernard Baruch said, a man cannot retire his experience, he must use it.